Hi guys, welcome back to Hermitowns and Horses. If you saw my last video, you will know that I went to Repticon recently and I got two new leopard geckos. They're actually sitting in this bookshelf behind me. Anyway, before I introduce my new geckos to you, I want to take some time just to get to know them better so that I can really describe their personalities well. But in the meantime, I do have two other new animals that I need to introduce to you guys. This video was really unexpected, this wasn't at all my plan, but just the way things worked out, I ended up taking in two new hermit crabs, and I will consider them rescues, although I do use the term rescue kind of loosely. It wasn't your typical rescue situation, so just take note of that. So I want to say that this story started about two months ago, because it was around the beginning of the school year. I know someone that is a teacher. She had got some hermit crabs and some fish to be her school pets for the school year, which I feel like is a pretty common thing. Lots of people get pets for their classroom to just make everything a bit more interesting. However, I don't think that all pets make great classroom pets, and hermit crabs would be one of those. Because hermit crabs are so delicate and they require such specific care, plus they molt and you don't see them for months at a time, I would not consider them to be the best classroom pet. But anyway, that was just for you teachers out there that are thinking of getting hermit crabs as your classroom pets. Don't do it. Anyway, she bought these two hermit crabs. She set up a 10 gallon for them. They had some eco worth. They had some places to hide. Not the greatest setup, but it wasn't terrible. This is what it looked like. She really just did what the pet store told her to do, but she really was trying to take care of these crabs well and keep them alive. So she found out that I have hermit crabs and I know a thing or two about them, so she had me come and she asked if I could help her fix up her crab habitat and just give them the best chance of survival. And I was super happy with that. I was like, yes, of course I will help you make your crab habitat better. So I stopped in at her classroom once a week and I started to fix up the crab attack just piece by piece and make little things better here and there. And it got to a point where it looked significantly better than it had. However, the one thing that I hadn't been able to correct was making the substrate deeper because if you guys have seen my videos on hermit crab substrate, you will know that they need, you know, quite a bit. And these guys only had like an inch. I ended up replacing all of their substrate because there had been bugs living in it. I don't know what the story was there but there were bugs so I only had a little tiny bit of sand left over and that's what I ended up putting into the tank my plan was that the next week when I came I would just buy more sand and add in the rest of what they needed it was pretty simple but the rest of their care had been improved they had better humidity better water better places to hide and climb and all of that so I was feeling pretty confident that they would be okay well the following week when I came to take care of the crabs again and add some more sand in for them. I didn't see the crabs in the tank, so I reached in there and I picked up their one log hide that they had and I was horrified <laughs> to see that there were palmetto bugs in the tank. I don't even know how that happens when you have a screen lid, like, how do palmetto bugs get in here? This is like inside a classroom. We're not out in the woods. For those of you that are lucky enough to not know what palmetto bugs, they're these giant, horrible, cockroach-looking things, and they're just nasty. The ones in the tank were actually bigger than the crab, so it was scary. So not only were there palmetto bugs in the tank, but the two hermit crabs were right next to each other. One was fine, the other had molted on the surface because the substrate wasn't deep enough. I hadn't got to them in time. And looking back on the event, I really think that the hermit crab that molted on the surface had done it like just then. Because the other hermit crab was right next to him where he had molted and was probably going to eat him and his exoskeleton had it been maybe half an hour later. So I caught it just in time. So anyway, I was in a big panic. Like, oh my goodness, they were doing better. They had the proper care. They just needed more sand and then it was all going to be nice and now they're like on the verge of death. So I contacted the teacher and I was like, look, your hermit crabs are going to die. Unless I do something really drastic, they're not gonna make it. So I ended up taking them home with me. I used these two plastic cups and just put a paper towel over it to hopefully keep it dark. Anyway, I brought them home. 
and the surface molter I ended up putting in a little tiny critter keeper and I made it very very basic just some sand a hide some food and water and I covered him up in a towel so that was nice and dark like he was underground and I just left him alone for like two weeks. I was trying to create an environment that would be like had he molted under the ground, just dark, isolated, and stress-free. The other crab, the one that hadn't molted yet but was thinking about it, I put him in a quarantine tank and I get asked a lot on this channel if quarantining your crabs is necessary or why I do it. I have two big reasons that I quarantine. One is so that if the hermit crab needs to molt, like this one, he's in a very, very safe place to do it. He can go and molt and no other crab is going to bother him while he's doing it. The other even more important reason that I quarantine is so that if that crab is sick or if it has bugs, it's not going to just spread it to the rest of my crabs and potentially kill them. So those are the reasons that I quarantine. But basically, I put this crab into quarantine. It was a five-gallon tank. He ate like a ton the first day. Like I have never ever seen a hermit crab eat as much as this one did in this first day. Sure enough, after a couple of days, that crab went down and molted as well. Anyway, to conclude this story, after weeks of waiting for the one to come up from molting and the other one to get healthy after molting, they were both very, very healthy. Okay guys, so now I am cutting in here with a voiceover because unfortunately the rest of my video got deleted. That was super fun. Anyway, as I was saying, both crabs proved to be extremely healthy. They both have a really, really nice dark purple color to them now. They are both males. The one that had molted on the surface, his new name is Kermit. And the other crab is now named Kane, short for Hurricane. After their quarantine period was over, they were both able to join my main colony and have fit in really well. I'm not sure if I will be keeping them long term or not. Unfortunately, my 29 gallon tank is already a little bit too small for the 5 crabs I already have, and now having 7 crabs is definitely too small. Fortunately, due to lack of space, I'm not able to get them a bigger crab habitat, although I am considering making a topper tank or maybe a separate crab habitat. I'm not sure completely what I'll do yet. Whatever I decide to do, I will keep you guys updated both on my Instagram account and my community tab here on YouTube for those of you that don't use Instagram. I'm going to be making an attempt to post more frequently on my Instagram account and also post more regularly here on my YouTube channel. Anyway guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed getting to meet Kane and Kermit. If you did enjoy the video, make sure that you leave it a like, and also make sure you're subscribed so that you can get all the updates on these new rescue hermit crabs. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!